All right, now it says we're live, but we just want to wait for Jamie. Okay. Come on, Jamie, don't fail me now. Yes, it looks and sounds good. All right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hello from the Grainfather Homebrewers panel. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We are super excited to talk all, thing grain, all things Grainfather, all things homebrewing with you all today. I'm sure we've got some, some Grainfather users, some Grainfather wannabe users, all-in-one users. Um, but in the end, we're all homebrewers, right? So let's, let's talk a little bit about beer. I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to our two guests today. We've got Catherine and Maria, and they're going to introduce themselves. Catherine, if you'd like to go first. Sure. Hey, I'm Catherine. I'm a longtime homebrewer since like, I don't know, 2010 or 2008 or something like that. And um, early adopter of the Grandfather G30 um, off of their Kickstarter program. And um, in addition to that, I'm also um, a professional photographer and a, an assistant brewer for Counterbalance Brewing in Seattle. And I also work at Sound Homebrew Supply. So there's just a few things going on, um, but I'm That's still awesome. homebrewing, still homebrewing um, quite actively and I'm looking forward to you know figuring out what my place in the beer industry is after this. Great. Hey, we're gonna have to talk photography because I was a pro oh. photographer for 15 years. Yeah, right on. Went to school and everything. Wow. Um, yeah, still paying for it. <laughs> Here's a word of advice, kids. Don't go to art school. <laughs> Unless you're independently wealthy. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you for that, Catherine. Uh, Maria, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Oh, that's great. That's really cool, Catherine. Cool background. Um, yeah, so my name's Maria. I live in Canada. I'm in Nova Scotia. I'm currently in my little green brew barn. Um, myself and my neighbor and friend, Rochelle, we are the beer brunettes. Um, and we're, we have a social media presence, but we started brewing a couple years ago just for fun, just to get creative. And because who doesn't love beer, right? Like who doesn't want to brew beer? Um, yeah, so my day job, I am a project manager for uh, in critical infrastructure here in Nova Scotia. So there's a, a province called Newfoundland that is an island in Canada. So I'm a project manager for the ferry company that transports goods and infrastructure and critical needs and food, everything over to that um, island. So that's my day job. So I work for the federal government. And then my evening job is drinking beer, having fun, brewing beer and hanging out with my friends and, and my fellow brew community. So yeah, that's just a bit about me. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and I'll introduce myself as I too am a grandfather home brewer, and I'm going to be in on this conversation. Um, I'm sure y'all know me by now, Michelle Wonder. I'm part of the WIBS team here. Um, but I started home brewing about four years ago, um, actually, as I was looking to transition out of my photography career and I was looking for what's next. And I thought, you know, I could do beer, I could get into the beer industry. Um, and so I kind of was trying to figure out how I can get in, how I can get knowledgeable about it. Everything I saw online was like homebrew, homebrew, homebrew. Uh, there's no better way to get to know beer than actually making it. So um, I jumped right in and it fell in love almost immediately. Um, I've been homebrewing ever since. And I currently work for a company called Perfect Pour Services. And what we do is we do uh, draft system installation, maintenance, line cleaning, um, all of that all over the Pacific Northwest. Um, we have about 650 to 700 clients um, and 15 techs. So we busy. <laughs> we're very busy, um, but we're keeping those lines clean because that is so very important out there for the brewers work hard, man. They want the beer to taste good when it gets to you mm -hmm. and it can really fall down on that very last leg of the race. Um, so, you know, if you ever taste a beer and it tastes weird on draft, go up and talk to the people who served it to you. Ask them, do they get their lines clean? Ask them for another pint. Ask them for a bottle or a can. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Um, let's talk a little bit about how we started home brewing. Um, Catherine, you want to share your story? Yeah. So my partner and I started home brewing together, I don't know, back in 
2010, I think. And we originally bought um, a whole used system, including a kegerator and the all grain mash tun and burners and kettles and everything. Yeah. And um, we really jumped right into all grain brewing. I think we made one partial extra batch together and then we just kind of kept going from there. So, um, I mean, that'll lead into the story about why the grain father is great, but <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, we just drank a lot of beer. We um, went to a local brewery and the assistant brewer there kept asking us, you know, well, when are you guys going to start making beer? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Soon, soon we'll do it. And eventually we did. And so, and then, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 We'll get to the grain father, the conversion of grain father in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Maria, how, how about you? Did you guys jump right in with the grain father or did you do we something did. else to get started? We are, we are grain father, ride or die. Everything we own is grain father. We love grain father. Um, cool. we, we both got into brewing just a couple of years ago and really just wanted to be creative. It's like when you're a kid, you know, you're, you're coloring, you're playing, you're doing all these things and you grow up and you look around one day and you're like, what is fun in my life anymore? Like go to work, come home, yeah. make supper. You just, you need to create, you need to be a maker and produce something cool and have fun in the process. And like I say, we like drinking beer, right? So <laughs> I put the two together. So we went into all green right away. We started out with um, one G30 all in one, two fermenters, uh, two conical fermenters. And we got the spark, we have this grandfather sparge water heater. We kind of went all in right away. Um, and then since then, we've also gotten an additional G30 as well as a G70 that we just got about a month ago, which is pretty darn cool. And I will tell you that we used all of our muscles to lift that. And I, Rochelle, it's funny because at the time, Rochelle said, I knew we had it. And I was like, me too. But at the time, I was like, we don't got it. We don't got it. <laughs> so we sent yeah. to lift it up just in case. Very smart. Just in case, like, I'm all about like female power and I lift weights and everything. And I do, and we are very strong, but mm -hmm. man, until you're lifting, it is, it's a blind game. The and best is, female totally, muscle right there, the brain. Totally, <laughs> you got her. But when you're faced with like 70 liters of hot wort and grain, you're like, <gasps> this could be a safe That's nightmare. it, is if you drop that thing and it splashes back in, it's coming yeah, all out no, on you. Yeah. Great and fun. And yeah, so we, we're relatively new home brewers. So that's kind of why we got into the social media side of it is because I mean, I have all the, even today, I have so many questions. I keep on my iPhone a running list in my notes of every time I have a question about brewing or about beer, about the process, I think someone else out there probably has the same question. And I have this massive list. And then when I answer for myself, I quickly answer for everybody else as well. And just hope that, you know, passing along the knowledge helps. But more than that, building the community of, um, of dedicated home brewers and so many fun, like awesome, cool tips, amazing people and relationships that we've made. That's it. Building the community is just everything. It's it's so cool. The home brewing community is just gnarly. Bang on. Love them. Love you guys. Ah, gnarly, gnarly. Love <laughs> gnarly. it. Yeah, beer in Canada go hand in hand. I believe I saw something recently. I think it was from, uh, it was Michelle Tham, who was like the beer educator for Labatt's. Um, and she said that Google uh, search for Canada is the highest in the world uh, or for beer. I did not know me. that. Interesting. Yeah. The highest search traffic for beer on Google okay. is in Canada. Nice. <laughs> that's that. Those so that's people. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. I know the McKenzie brothers. I've seen that movie so many times, man. Strange Brew. <laughs> so fun. So fun. Um, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I talked a little bit of how I got into home brewing, you know, like to kind of use it as a way of getting into the industry. Um, and I think it's something that's going to stick with me because I don't see myself in the industry being in the brew house necessarily. Um, you know, I'm almost 50 and I'm like, I don't know if I want to be a manual laborer like that for the rest of my days. So <laughs> I'm really into the beer education stuff. So I think I'm going to end the, you know, uh, fundraising, using beer to make change, to help causes, to elevate voices, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, with the Women's Craft Fermentation Alliance and the Women's International Beer Summit, we're definitely helping to achieve that. So uh, that's really that. great. Yeah, Thank totally. You. That's amazing. Catherine, why don't you talk about how you got your hands on your first grandfather, why you made the move? Well, all right. So we, we moved houses. We got a dog. We had life kind of take over. We didn't, the brewing on the propane system was just like too much of a hassle. Um, so we just kind of like fell away from it for a couple years. And 
then we heard about this Kickstarter for um, Grandfather, I think, back in 2015. And I'll just share my screen for a sec. Yeah, please. Um, and it's hard to fathom that Grandfather started as a Kickstarter, right? Like, right, I mean, well, it's so I mean, like they were established. Brand. Yeah, they were established already, like New Zealand, Australia, I believe, and then. Um, to bring it to the U.S., they were like, "Okay, we gotta we gotta raise some money so that we can, you know, warehouse this stuff and distribute this stuff and get our certifications and all that." So um, we ended up joining in on this in 2015, and um, really haven't looked back since. Um, that is how we got our first grandfather. Awesome. So were you a Kickstarter? Were you like an original Kickstarter? The original. Yeah. Uh -huh. OG, nice. Yeah, that's that's where we got the shirt. <laughs> wow, that is yeah. really cool. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I have the shirt, but I wasn't a grandfather early adopter in <laughs> no. reality. I no. worked at home, oh. worked at the homebrew shop, and they had a bunch yeah, yeah. of them sitting there, so I grabbed one. Look, I'm here um, like a chump in my stretchy blazer. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're looking cool. <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, it was pretty cool. It came with some extras, like a shirt and a paddle and a fermenter. And um, oh, nice. Yeah, it was it was great. So That's awesome. Um, I mean, the the reason to get it was it just makes brewing so much easier, and it really led to me being taking off and doing it on my own rather than you know just collaborating oh, with cool. my. I'm My curious, partner. did the did the later G30, like is the early G30 very similar to the G30 nowadays? Or are there many it iterations? Is, um, it is, but the controller is different. So the, the current version has the Bluetooth um, integrated controller and mm -hmm. all that. The, the first one didn't have that. It was just, the, ah. you know, pretty much you, you set the settings on the machine, you know, and it's fine, it's great. To be honest oh. with you, I find the Bluetooth can be a little bit more of a pain in the butt than anything. So we don't very it. oftentimes <laughs> I just manual it. No, um, I, I, I yeah. always manual it. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you have your brew space close to your normal space, it's pretty easy just to run it without it. But it could be very useful in the, in yeah. the right circumstance. Mm -hmm. I definitely have used it a few times for um, prepping my mash water. Yes. Um, and then dialing in the timer to get it started yes. like an hour before I get out of bed in the morning mm -hmm. or something because I'm an early morning brewer. Mm -hmm. um, I usually like to start brewing at like 7 or 8 a.m. with my coffee. Um, mm. And so that can be very handy because sitting there waiting for your brew water, your mash water mm -hmm. to come to temp sometimes, especially on the 110 models. And it could be in your jam um, jams in bed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Still yeah. snuggling mm -hmm. with all the animals totally. um, and, the, and the wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I got my there. first. Yeah. <laughs> I got my grandfather. Um, oh, wait, one more thing. So you still have the original G30 then? I do. Yeah, I do, cool. but the control the controller's been upgraded. Okay, that's what I was going to oh, say. Yeah, you cool. can upgrade that controller, yeah. um, which is one of the nice things about the grandfather. You know, if that power system uh, that drives it kind of, you know, craps out for some reason, um, mm -hmm. you can just totally get another controller, which is fantastic. Yep. It's not like you have to, to scrap the whole unit. Yeah. Um, not to mention grandfather is exceedingly They're good at backing up their stuff. I mean, the warranty is really more of a an idea um <laughs> at the homebrew shop we had people come in and have issues after the warranty and there was never a time grandfather didn't replace it uh, mm -hmm. via bsg um so that's a, always a really great thing to know uh, about them um but yeah so when i worked at the homebrew shop here in portland um fh steinbart which is uh the world's oldest or sorry the country's oldest homebrew supply store they were founded in portland in 1918 um actually made their way all through prohibition um and yeah it was it's just great to be part of that uh, beer history in portland so they have a whole commercial side of their business as well so they were very much a supporter and incubator and a sister of a lot of the early craft beer mm -hmm. movement that started up here you know able to get them their bags of grain and you know emergency situations get things sorted for them so that was cool um but immediately we had a shop grandfather and got to brew on that a few times and i was like oh yeah i want to trade my cooler system in for this mm -hmm. um and so one of the blessings of working at the homebrew store is the employee discount baby mm -hmm. um <laughs> and they let me put it on layaway but take it so i got to buy it at cost on layaway it was fantastic 
Um, Cause it's definitely a little bit of a high on the price point there, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely something to save up for. for. Yeah, mm -hmm. you absolutely mm -hmm. do. I do, mean, worth we've it. got a uh, grandfather was the first. And of course there's a slew of products out there that are similar all in one brewing systems. Um, and they all have their positives and minuses, but we all still know Grainfather is the Cadillac. I mean, there's just it yeah. is. There's just there's no, no two ways around. about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That Counterflow Wart Chiller in and of itself is such a game changer. I mean, I just love that over those immersion chillers. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you're in temperature range within a minute or two. It stays steady. It doesn't matter what time see. of year it is. G71, I'm looking at it right oh. now. Maybe I should, it is massive. Yeah, bring it over. Bring wanna, it over. Wanna, I wanna yeah, see it. yeah, let's see it. Let's yeah. see it over. Because I know they did uh, reformulate on the G40 too. Is their 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 lid now has a handle on it, so it doesn't have oh, a hole. I'm on a webinar. Oh my god! Where you can, like, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that is the big mama of, of chillers. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, well, you need to like build like, a whole housing huge like system for massive. that thing. Wow. Well, what's the yeah. G seventy? Is a fifteen gallon system, isn't it? Yeah. Like, let me show you. This is just a normal glass for scale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your head for scale is enough. I mean, my yeah, and I have a small head, so <laughs> yeah. that is incredible. That is incredible. Oh, that's yeah, great. It's a big one. I mean, yeah, the thing I love about my grandfather is it's just uh it's it's so easily portable, it's easy to store, it's one yeah. unit, right? Like that's where you mash, that's mm -hmm. where you sparge, that's where you boil um you can just take it put it in your kitchen like it doesn't have to have the big outdoor setup with the propane and everything mm -hmm. which still has its place i mean I, I still enjoy doing that from time to time you know it's more of an right. event type of a brew um but just you know it's just so nice that it's like a it's like a kitchen appliance for the most part this, but this yet is, you're still sorry this is this is my brew house yeah you know, kitchen. i here yeah yeah absolutely it's great and because you, just, friends come you can mop over, the floor and it's clean kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's totally. yeah, that happens every brew day. Got them off the yeah. floor. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and I just, yeah, I just love the easy use, but yet you're still actively involved in the entire brew day, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a push a button, walk away kind of a system. None yeah. of these are. No. Um, you still are actively involved, but you got to grain in, you got to stir in your mash, you know, you got to set your temperature. Of course, make your recipe. Um, you know, it's nice because it's got the recirculation built in. So you get that nice clean word at the end. Um, but you still got to lift your basket. You still got to manually sparge, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's very still hands on in the process. It's just so much more compact and, and less to clean and just all that good stuff. So mm -hmm. I know I took like a lot of the positives as what I love about <laughs> it. But Maria, well, what about you? What do you love most about the grandfather? Oh, that's a big question. Um, Top five. You know what I think I love most about the Green Father? And this might not be the answer you guys are thinking, but their support team and their team, and they're just awesome. They're so fun and cool to work with. They, At one point, they engaged us a little bit. They were launching a new website, and they engaged a few home brewers to just get from their perspective, what would you be looking for? What, what was missing? Is it the format that you expected? And it was so cool. We got to really know their whole team. We had some questions that, we, you know, some functions we weren't quite sure about. Like, just so cool. And the other thing I'll say, too, is um, just having started homebrewing a, a couple of years ago, their tutorials on YouTube, step one, step two, on how to homebrew, so easy. And I have actually, like, I've looked up ones from, for Brewzilla and for other, other brew, all one brew systems, and they're just not the same for in my in in my understanding anyway for my yeah. preference of how i like to learn just awesome like you you don't need help from anybody you don't need to call anybody you don't need to talk to tech support or anything like that you can just figure it out it's awesome it's intuitive and i think that's probably those were probably my favorite things and i mean when i was learning i just watched those on repeat 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 over and over and over and then you know now it's second nature you don't even have to think about it it's just you get in the flow and you zone everything out in the world and just like stress-free it's awesome yeah 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 totally Catherine what about you what's your what's your top features there that really make well, my, you happy I mean my favorite thing is that I can do it all 100 100 by myself 
Like, I don't need somebody to help me watch mm -hmm. a boil kettle in the side yard. I don't need to worry about burning the house down because I forgot <laughs> about something or, you know, um, it, like I can do it all by myself in my kitchen. Um, and just like I've really streamlined my process so that it goes as quickly as it can and clean up is as quick as it can. And I try yeah. to waste as little water as possible and all that stuff. So, yeah. You know, that's what's nice, too, with the in and out hoses on the chiller. You know, it's so easy to just put your out hose right into a bucket and you're saving mm -hmm. that as wash water. You know, when yep. you're ready to, you just dump it back in the kettle, heat it back in the unit, eat it up and circulate mm -hmm. it and you're all clean. It's it's really, really cool. Um, on the G70, it's interesting because normally you put the counter flow, obviously, on top of the lid with the G30. But the G70, you guys have seen how massive it is. You mm -hmm. have to just put it on a stable surface, like a countertop oh, or a tabletop right. or something to right. the side because it would just shatter the lid. <laughs> like There's no way the lid could oh. hold it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I've rarely ever used the set it on top thing um, for me. Ah. I just feel like you've got all that heat coming off of that kettle there, and that's going to be influencing your chiller a little bit. Um, but I also just set it on a chair right next to it and it hooks up just fine and stuff. So, cause occasionally I have to open up the lid and like scrape off the filter a little bit to get those last little bits, uh, mm -hmm. you know, wart in, don't want to waste a drop. So, um, we're going to head over to a video here in a second that, uh, mm -hmm. Maria was nice enough to share with mm -hmm. us of her awesome little brew barn. Uh, but before we head over there, you guys want to talk a little bit about what you're drinking? I'm sure it's a home brew. Mm -hmm. Yes. I am drinking a Hellas export beer that I made on the Grandfather. Um, it's quite delicious. I like to make the lagers. Do you have more of it? You're almost out. Uh, I have a little bit more in back stock. Yeah. Sweet, <laughs> sweet, right? The video is going to be running here for about four minutes, so I'll we'll have time to top off if we need ah. to. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Maria? I'm drinking, uh, I'm drinking uh, one I made, um, just a recipe I made myself, and it's uh, mostly heavy on Turo. Um, but it's just kind of a light ale with apricot, a little bit of apricot in it. It's a good summer mm. beer. You know, it's kind of like if you build it, they will come. I'm hoping if I make a summer beer, summer might come. But unfortunately, it's no one out there today. So <laughs> this will be really nice before summer. Wow. <laughs> I don't call it the great white north for nothing. Um, yeah, I too am drinking a homebrew that I made on my grandfather's system. This is actually a gold medal award winner that I got at She Brew this year. Um, this is a smoked porter in the uh, Alaskan porter kind of vibe. Um, yeah, I found out that this actually came in a very close second in Best of Show. So. Wow. That close, but I'm, yeah, but Tyler from uh, the Brewed Up podcast, SoCal Cerveceros, uh, she won with her Saison and it, it was great. I judged that Saison and it was fantastic. So that's really happy cool. to come and, in second to her. And I judged one of Michelle's other beers that was really fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that oh very you guys much. Are the Mac Daddy's like judging beer. That's so cool. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oh yeah, and that's a great way for a home brewer to to refine their uh, their knowledge, you know, because then you can yeah. really turn a more critical eye to your own beers, mm -hmm. um, and figure out mm -hmm. exactly where in your process you can refine to kind of make them a little bit better, you know. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's head over to my screen. Oh, is that a doggy? Yeah, brew dog, brew dog. Excellent. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna open up a screen here, and uh, this is Maria showing us around her brew house. Just give me a little uh, yes if you guys can hear it, okay? Hi, guys. Yes. Maria here Great. with the Beer Brunettes, and I wanted to show you today our little green brew barn. It's very weird to hear yourself speaking. <laughs> it's very strange to see yourself on camera. <laughs> Hi guys, Maria here with the Beer Brunettes and I wanted to show you today our little green brew barn. Come on in. Here we are guys. Here you will see We've got two fermenters right now, of course, the glycol chiller, and we've got two G30s, 
and a sparge water heater. And of course, we have the amazing G70. Ooh la la, right? Isn't that sexy? <laughs> And this is it. A couple things we did when we were planning our brew barn build was we made sure that the height of the counters would allow for the sparge water to go in when the grain basket is lifted. Of course, we built this specifically around the grain father G30 model. Genius, right? <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we did, you'll notice, is I'll move you a little bit closer so you can see. We made sure to wire um, these receptacles and a receptacle under the sink on uh, separate circuits so that, you know, we wouldn't blow one while using the other. Also, what we did just recently, when we knew we were gonna get the G70, we had to install 220. We already wired it for 220, but install 220 uh, hardware here so that we could brew with the, the higher voltage. Pretty cool. And then what else? Um, <laughs> of course, we've got under the counter, um, a water purification system. We use reverse osmosis, obviously. Uh, and that, that, you know, gets the water profile that we need for our brews. Of course, we also had to throw this into the build. Because you need a really <laughs> clean glass, right? Um, yeah, here's the, here's the um, brew water that we use from the, from the RO system. And this computer is where we do all of our good brew planning. So we'll go on here, use the app to create recipes, do small batches, test them out. And yeah, we just, we enjoy our time in here. Of course, we have the little mini fridge down here that is filled with all types of amazing craft beer. And then over this side, we've got our kegs that are ready for our home brews whenever we put them in. So right now we've got a few on tap. We love getting different <laughs> tap handles. <laughs> so that's kind of like a fun hobby to do. But yeah, and in the meantime, here's the other end of the brew barn. And this basically, uh, we've got our nice mill in the corner right there, you'll see. And I mean, a dartboard and some weights because what else are you going to do when you're waiting for the boil to happen? <laughs> so fun. <laughs> That's basically it. Thanks for um, checking out our brew space, guys. We hope to make some new friends and brew with you guys soon. Cheers. Very strange to hear yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what an accent I have. I don't know how you guys can make me out. <laughs> you seem to have a very large background noise. Uh, Catherine, would you mute yourself for yeah. a moment? Let me mute you. There you go. Okay, yeah, that's definitely coming from Catherine's side there. Sorry. Yeah, maybe, uh, that's okay. Can you maybe turn down your uh, speakers a little bit? Well, you don't have speakers, you have your headphones. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty distracting. So what I'm gonna do is, yeah, let's just have you be muted until it's, till I call on you there. Um, I may ask you to go out and I'll bring you back in too. That might help too. If we we will give it a second here. Um, Maria, thank you. My goodness. You have got a really kick butt brew barn there. I have to say, I'm pretty sure you're the envy of a lot of folks here today. Thanks guys. Yes. <laughs> years in the process, saving our pennies and everything else, but. Yeah. I mean, you thought of everything, you know, I love that the, the ROS water you got going right there. Um, you know, the, all the considerations with the height of the counters for the spark. So you can just do, you know, gravity fed without it being any issues. Um, like I said, I think you need to come up with a new plan to sparge with that G70. 
Um, I know, totally. We didn't plan for the G70. The G70 wasn't a thought in the wind when we made this place. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I don't think anyone thought Grandfather was going to be coming out with a 15 gallon, you know, yeah. basically nano. It's like a nano brewery system for the most part. Um, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Really appreciate it. Um, like I said, yeah, my brew setup is pretty much like I have a bunch of my equipment just kind of stashed in our pantry, um, which is like a walk-in pantry. And then most of it's downstairs. And so I kind of have to do quite a bit of uh, bringing it all out, setting it all up in order to do my brew days. Um, I definitely dream of having a dedicated brew space where it just can live where it lives. And uh, that's where it goes. Um, how about you, Catherine? Do you have to kind of haul everything up and down as you go or... Oh, for sure. You know, I have a little storage space, like a, a utility room, and then everything comes out to the kitchen, brew day happens, and gets all washed and put back away. Yeah, cool. You know, that uh, it seems like the background noise is a little bit better there on yours, so I think you can probably leave yourself open now. Um, thank you. I don't know what that was about, but who knows? All right. I got you back on. Oh. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. You know, one thing that I did for my grandfather was uh, pretty quickly. I put in quick connects. Um, I really did not like the like spinner thing that, you know, I have to set on to, to put on the spark or the uh, recirculation arm and the chiller um, as well as the extra hoses you kind of need on your, like I put pretty quickly a um, longer recirc hose um, as mm -hmm. well on my, yeah. And I upgraded the, uh, the output hose on the chiller um, as well. And that has a quick connect where one section of silicon tubing has the thermometer addition that you can put in there, right? The little temperature reader. It's like, stainless steel with a little hole and you can slide your um temp probe into it so that way when the wort's going through your chiller it's reading out on your grandfather exactly what the wort temperature is nice. um, coming out of the chiller um but when i'm like recirculating my wort through the great through the chiller to sanitize it um it's coming through really really hot um so i have just another section of tubing and i just put on there real quick so that metal is it gets mm -hmm. so hot if you try to touch mm -hmm. it um, with 212 degree work going through it. So it's real quick to just snap on, snap off. Plus mm -hmm. it makes replacing that tubing as it kind of ages and gets a little bit yellow a lot easier. Um, but for the most part, that's really the only true upgrade I've done or like, you know, hack. Um, Catherine, have you done anything on yours to kind of make your system more the way you like it? Yeah, um, like like you did, I put quick connects um, the cam lock fittings onto the research pipe and just like I don't use the, the research arm anymore. It's just a long tube. Um, yeah. And then that has, you know, connections that I can use to fill the fermenter and, you know, with the triplant fittings and, and all that stuff. Um, I made a Reflectix jacket to go around it, which helps maybe a little bit with, you know, getting up to boil temp. Um, <laughs> And then uh, what's the last thing? Oh, I have to admit, I don't use the counterflow chiller. Okay. Ooh, that's all right. The, I, have the, I have the, um, the jaded um, immersion chiller that I use. So. Hey, cool. Whatever works for everyone, right? Like yeah. that absolutely is, you know, perfectly good way to chill things. So that's not a problem at all. No, you're, um, you're like, guys. I got some bad news coming. Right? You've been <laughs> talking no, up this chiller <laughs> so much. No, it's a good chiller. It just, um, you're off the reasons. panel. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. We're not here to throw any shade. So, you know. Um. <laughs> well, we all have our variations, right? Which is whatever. Yeah. Works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Maria? Is there anything you guys do that's a little Quick out of disconnect. norm? Or? Yeah. I just, I'm sitting here thinking and I'll pull up the spirit. Now, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but if you have a two second memory like me, I can never, like I'll read my spirit water volume and I'll have to read it a million times. So what I did, I just took this apart from the top. I put a tiny little O-ring on it and now I just move it to whatever my spirit water is. So I know it's oh, simple, nice. but man, I, I checked that yeah. off the charts probably 15 times. 
you know, however many liters it is. And now I just set it and forget it. And it works like a charm, but it's just something, something little, but something that causes me a lot of grief that mm -hmm. I feel like grandfather, if you guys are listening, you should include something in there already for people to do that nice little continual improvement piece. Right? That's yeah. pretty smart. That's pretty yeah. smart. No, I think that they glean a lot of, uh, new features they put in their upgrades from the community you know i found that they're very they're very active on like i'm on the, like an advanced grandfather user group on facebook um and you'll see someone post something about you know oh, i'm having this issue and i can't really find and they respond so they're like watching you know they're in those clubs in those that's why they're groups. awesome that's um, everything and they're not over there just like promoting and trying to sell you but they're there to like when there's a need that the community okay. can't answer they dive in and they when take you're, when control you're of it. Making a big investment in equipment because yeah. you do over time. Like you might start with an all in one, which is a big investment, but then you know you're going to get the fermenter, you're going to get the glycol, like you're going to invest in different things and you want to know they're not just going to forget about you five years from now, 10 years from now. And obviously, you guys have said they're great. So, yeah, absolutely. Too. I just do want to remind people, um, in case I haven't even mentioned this, which is uh, my error, we have a couple of polls going down here. If you look at the bottom underneath of our beautiful faces, you'll see an ask a question and also a polls. Uh, one of them is just asking, you know, if you've got a grandfather, do you wish you had one? Do you have a different system? Uh, but the other one is the real one we're concerned about here is do you want to win that G40? Um, if you are in this session and you want to win that G40, Go ahead and answer yes to that question. Um, remarkably, I see no, no votes on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in probably about 10 or 15 minutes here, I'm going to pull the names of the folks who chimed in and said they want to win that. And we're going to do a random drawing. And one of you is going to want to get one of those G40s. Um, Maria, you said you have a G40. What did you find was like one of the nicest features of upgrading from the G30 to the G40? Me, I don't have a G40. I actually oh, you don't. Said that's I the see. Only, My that's bad. The only one I don't have, so I don't mm. know if I can win that one. But <laughs> you went straight to the big boy. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at getting a G40 for myself, and because 15 gallon batches are more than I need. Um, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I brew so mm -hmm. frequently because I enjoy it so much, and yeah. you know, I have room for three or four kegs, um, and I drink most of that <laughs> myself. So we don't need to be putting totally. 15 the gallons is like on. The perfect amount. The perfect amount. it really is because i think i would use it to do i would probably still do more six gallon batches um but i would love to be able to use it for the big beers right because yes. like on the grain father g30 it's you max out at about 17 pounds of grain is what i found mm -hmm. um i know they kind of say 20 um but it's real no. tough to get 20 pounds um converted and sparge correctly and not just have it be really close to the top and scary um, so I usually max out at about 17 pounds. So and you can do the whole reiterated mash thing. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's you essentially do like two mashes and then create wort. Um, and then, you know, transfer that first wort off and then you do another mash and transfer that off. Um, that sounds like a lot of work. So when I do my big beers, um, cause my wife, she's like, I drink 12% and up. Um, so you know, we're talking 30 pound grain bills. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely bust out my old cooler system, you know, cause it can absolutely handle it. Um, but so I would love to have the G40 just for that point. You know, you can do a six gallon batch and as much grain as you want to shove in there, it's going to shove in there cause it's got that additional capacity. Yeah. Totally cool. Yeah. Have you thought about upgrading Catherine now that you've had I yours have. for quite a while? I have. I mean, like you, I want to do bigger beers and it's just, you know, I, I actually have two grandfathers and I could brew them at the same time and like ferment them together, the strong beers, but I'd rather just do it all at once um, yeah. and have the 220 for heating, um, getting up to boil a little faster yes. and uh, be able to just like not, not have to do yeah. the stuff. Yeah, the yeah. separate, but Something you know, cool combine. The 40 is um, the control box is like the G70, I believe, and that it's magnetic. So it's really cool. You don't have any of those <sighs> issues of fumbling to get it on and off. Like, you, I can show you guys if you want, but it's like magnetic. It go, it's pretty cool. It just yeah, like let's see it. On. Let's see it. All right. Um, yeah, wearing, that's the I'm thing that I've never understood. I'm just so, gonna no problem. Tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> 
we can't even see it. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. the one thing I've never understood is my G30, it doesn't quite sit down in that handle. It just kind of flops yeah. around on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I never really understood how, why they made it exactly like that. But right. uh, it's a small like, thing to- Like one, one thing about. that I would love to have in the G30 is like a very, very bottom, bottom dump valve. Yes. Um, because- That's awesome, uh, right? Like, Having yeah. to clean and like dump out that last little bit out of the, the sink is just like. I agree. I know I got to pick it up and I'm lucky. I have like a six foot claw foot tub in my bathroom. So that's like my wash sink, you know, which is fantastic. Um, but it's definitely like, yeah, it's difficult to get that out of there without a doubt. That would be a really nice feature. You're absolutely right. Um, that's so cool. Um, all right, let's see. We're coming on 110. We got about 20 minutes left here. We got a few more questions for you all. Um, mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the questions here in the uh, chat too, because we've got quite a few. Um, where can we find you on social media? I'd, I'd love to learn along with you. Um, Aww, Maria, I think that's, Aww, think that's for you. Yeah, um, if you actually... Um, Great. Yeah, please do. Here. And we, we did one YouTube video so far. We're new on YouTube, so it's pretty <laughs> funny. You can struck, laugh along the way with us. Um, and mostly our huge presence is on Instagram. We're big Instagrammers. We follow along into Facebook, but it's not a, it's not as big as Instagram, but we're mm -hmm. trying to get on YouTube. But yeah, we're the F Beer Brunettes, and Brunettes is like B-R-E-W. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you typed in a you typed in an M there instead of an N, so I just corrected that to uh oh, beer thanks. brunettes, not Mets. <laughs> I don't know what a brunette would be exactly. Um yep. Good. Yeah, no, I love your guys' content. You guys put stuff up, you guys do the like the little fast forward process so we can kind of see what you're doing and um looks like y'all are having a lot of fun. So I think that's a great resource. Yeah, we for try folks. to be really honest. We're yeah. honest with whatever we get because we've gotten a few things that we thought they'd be great but really you know we, we could live without them or they didn't function the way we want so we try and be honest for other home brewers and and you know have that community so if you're if you are saving your pennies for something you put them towards something that will benefit you the most mm -hmm. so we try and do that anyway but have fun teach us some stuff we maybe we'll teach you some stuff we love to hear some good recipes i'm looking at you two right now since you're so advanced I'd love to. I'd love to have the recipe for that uh, drink you're drinking right now. <laughs> Which one? I'm thinking about your stout. Oh, the smoked uh, porter. Yeah, the porter. Mm -hmm. It will be coming your way. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so at beer brunettes. And uh, how about you, Catherine? Do you guys do you have a social media scene um, going? Have, so the only social thing that I do that specifically, I mean, I'm really involved in a lot of beer groups, but on Facebook, but um, my own um, Instagram page is called Beer with Benefits. And it's where, you know, I'll make a beer sometimes and hopefully be able to give away money to local um, charities Aww. where we can, you know, help our local communities. So. Um, it's called beer with benefits. That. Um, there's underscores in between the words. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. Yeah, you can awesome. find me at, uh, Instagram. I am uh, under C smell taste beer. Um, that's kind of my website that I have. I still am kind of working on spending time on that, on that page. I too, like Maria was talking about, I was so blown away at how much content is out there that is given freely in the homebrew community. Um, and I've, you know, done so much reading, so many amazing YouTube channels. And I just kind of wanted to use that uh, website as a place to kind of congregate a bunch of information. Um, so if you want to be into JCP judging, like here's a whole bunch of resources that you can look up. Cool. If you want to go on the Cicerone track, here's a whole bunch of resources you can look up. Mm -hmm. um, if you're into homebrewing, beginner advanced, like here's the resources that I looked at. Here's the things I read. Here's the videos I watched. Um, just to kind of have like a dashboard that kind of has a lot of that stuff that took me months and months and months and months to find, you know, on my own out there. Um, so I just kind of wanted to do that for the community, you know? Um, so like I said, it's still in process. You'll see it's uh, coming soon on many of the sections. Um, but with the summit coming to an end, I'm going to have a big, huge hole in my schedule soon. So oh I'm hoping that I'll be able to dedicate a lot of more time to that too. So yeah, and lots of new friends. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Um, real quick, before we get to the rest of the questions uh, from the attendees, um, one thing I wanted to ask is, uh, do you guys do anything else with your grandfathers besides brewing, Maria? I, um, a few times I have, att I have attempted sous vide. Um, I'm a big, I mean, anyone who loves awesome tasting beer probably loves awesome tasting food as well. So I've attempted that. We'll like get a really nice cut of meat that I normally would not pay that much for and let it slow cook. And oh my gosh, you've never tasted something so good. So you guys should look it up. There's a couple good YouTubes out there that kind of tell you, suggest temperatures and time. You can do it like obviously lower temperature for a longer time, 73 degrees for um, like 12 hours, or you can shorten it up if you have less time. But if you wanted to do something like a date night at home or whatever the case is, really nice thing to do and like multiple uses for the grandfather mm -hmm. for any brewing nice. kit. So those of you thinking to invest, if you need to convince someone in the household, just be like steak, steak and beer. <laughs> no doubt, right? <laughs> if that doesn't sell them, why are you married to them, you know? Um, yeah, that's great. And we will have the uh, food safety announcement that you're talking 73 degrees Celsius, not 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So we all yes. know what proper temperature meat is. <laughs> Catherine, how about you? Anything yeah, cool well, like that? Yeah, like Maria, I've I've sous vide like twelve pounds of brisket in the grain grandfather for I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how many hours. I don't, I forget, but it was perfect and delicious. And then um, also, I do like a pot in pot type yogurt. So like you can get a stainless pot, put it inside the basket, and just get enough water in there to around it like a sous vide bath and yeah. do, your, do your yogurt that way it's like oh my god that's, so cool. that. that's pretty cool that's pretty that's cool. so cool i love that oh my god the 12 pounds of brisket you just blew like, my imagine mind to be like invited to your house to your kitchen <laughs> What's that? Yeah. imagine yeah. to be invited to your house to your kitchen yeah. i bet you have people lining up to be your kitchen friends <laughs> yeah right yeah see my <laughs> wife's a my wife is a lifelong vegetarian, so I'll be like, don't worry oh. about it, babe. It's in my equipment. Like, right, right, right. touching my uh, grandfather. It's Got not going to do with you. anything else. In it's the fine. <laughs> uh, that's, but that's one of the, one things, the, the best things about beer is, like, I don't know, you invite all your girlfriends over, you have a brunch, you make beer, you get to delegate, and, like, then at the end, there's there's beer, and everybody comes back, and we drink it all together. So. And then you're all feeling great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right what else can what else can we get you know can there be a better um, hobby no there cannot no. be <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um so i'm gonna ask you two a favor i've got to go download something and have a look see and decide who our winner is gonna be so i'm gonna turn off my video for a minute while i go do that if you two wouldn't mind uh going through the ask a question because you all can see it okay. um, just maybe pop those up and and maybe go through a few that uh, sound good to you um, and I'll be back in just a minute with our winner. Thank you all. all right. cool. Well, I think that um, we just answered the where can we find you on social media questions. Cool. Um, next one up is our grandfather's 220 or is there a 110 option? Yes, the G30s are, at least in the US, they're 110. Um, and then the G40 and up, I believe, are all 220. Mm-hmm. You can get for all of those obviously if you're if you're not wired up you can just just get adapters and anywhere you've got 220 volts like um your dryer your kitchen oven you can just plug into there right so don't let that deter you if you're not wired up for that um it's a bonus if you can be but there's always adapters so don't let that stop you from getting what you the, the equipment that you want to have right Let's see next one is i have another brand and lifting the inner basket after the boil is impossible by myself. Do you have something that assists with that? Yes. So mine, um, I'm planning to go to a G40 or a G70 or something bigger. And um, I'm working on making a block and tackle kind of pulley system to lift that basket so that I can still do it by myself. So, so G70? You have yeah, we just got same as you're saying a, a winch from Amazon. It's like yeah. 20 bucks. You can see what the weight is it's rated for. And I don't know if you have a place that you can string it up above. We've got a drop ceiling. So I'm not sure if your your place allows for that, but you can simply hook it up there. It's very easy. And then you can remove it so it doesn't need to be hanging there all the time. Right. Hmm. Um, 
Well, just the one what part of the brain. Brewing? Oh, okay. for, what are you each brewing? What are you each brewing for Big Brew Day 2022? I didn't think about it yet. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that yet. Ah, let me think of it. You know what? Hopefully I'm brewing that porter recipe. Oh. <laughs> that award-winning oh, porter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Maybe you will be too, and we can circle back and see how it turned out. <laughs> okay, cool. Funniest homebrew whoopsie story. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, my gosh. So many. So many. Um, I mean, I think funny homebrewing whoopsie stories are not funny at the time. They're <laughs> devastating. But mm -hmm. after, you have a little laugh about it. I know, like one of our first ever brews i mean normally brew take you what six hours start to finish i'm sure it took us 12 because it was one of our first brews mm -hmm. and we got to the very end we got our fermenters up and up and going there and we were like wicked we did it it's awesome good to go and then we checked in the next day and it wasn't fermenting and we were like okay we'll give it another 24 hours it wasn't fermenting and we realized we had simply not clipped the top of the fermenter onto the lid and there was oh. oxygen oh it was devastating it was so oh. devastating yeah but that the, was but the beer was fine thing. right Bria? when you were done the beer was fine i don't know no? we had to dump no. it it was oh. so good yeah no. yeah that was that was sad mm -hmm. i don't know another whoopsie one time we got we get uh secondhand kegs from pepsi and mm -hmm. they're supposed to be stress tested, cleaned out and everything from the vendor that sells them. But we got one, we made a brew, kegged the beer and came out the next day and the entire floor was covered. It had a slow leak in the keg, I guess. Oh, it was no. brutal, brutal. And then we contacted the store and they said, um, okay, sorry about that. Like, we'll send you a new kit. And I was thinking, okay, well, that's all they can do. But really in my mind, I was like, and that was another one that was right in the beginning. I was like 12 hours. I think that was the brew after the clip incident. And we were like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Not good brewers. laughs> yeah, funny. All right, everybody. Hey, I'm back. One of so you, you is one. I do. Oh, that's do. exciting. We had 20 oh. people say they wanted a grandfather, which is amazing. <laughs> Oh, sorry, 27. My bad. My bad. Um, which is fantastic. And uh, the magic random number generator came up with a winner. Do you guys want to know who it is or should we just wait till later? No, you I think we want to know right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. The winner of the grandfather G40 is someone who doesn't currently own a grandfather, which is awesome. <laughs> Says they don't have one, but they really want one. You're no. about to get one. And the name is, well, you're from Oskaloosa, United States. Someone know who that is yet? It's Mindy Knup, Knup, Mindy Knup. No way. Mindy Knup. Congratulations. Mindy doesn't care how I say her name because I called her name as the winner. So yeah. she is super happy. Congratulations, Yay, Mindy. Mindy. Congrats. Right? I'm going to oh, see if awesome. Mindy is uh, live right now. I'm going to bring her in. Her and see if she can, if I can pull her up on screen right now. Let's see if she'll do it. You can't say yes when you just won, right? Let's <laughs> see if she says yes. Woohoo, Mindy! So excited about that. She is accepted and she is connecting. Woo yeah, yeah. She gets that to join is, the awesome exciting. crowd that is Grandfather Users. All <laughs> right. That's so cool. What a way to start too with grandfathers with one of those amazing yeah. G40s. I mean, that is really the way to go about doing that, you know. Um, grandfather has been so generous with us, y'all. I mean, we gave away a G30. Um, Miss Maria and Rochelle, they actually are the ones who uh, won the grandfather um, conical fermenter that we gave away on Instagram. Yep, yep. Nice. That's that's how she got I was invited. Pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's how she got invited there um, to come on. It was part of her win. Okay, hey, we got Mindy. Oh, wow. All right. Yay. 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 Thanks for coming on with us. That's awesome. We appreciate it. I'm sure it's a little bit of a surprise, but, you know. My husband's standing here staring at me funny. He has no idea what's going on because I have my earbuds in. <laughs> Tell him, I want a grandfather. Hey, honey, 
You might want to hear this. Your mother's concerned about you. <laughs> oh, my mom's on the phone with my daughter, having no idea why I was yelling. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited for you, Mindy. My earbuds um, won't show up. Uh, okay. I just want a homebrewing thing. <laughs> Stop you won like I mean, how, how walking much is outside now. Yeah, I mean that's got to be three two thousand. Yeah, you're talking of fifteen hundred. My coworkers will be jealous. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, fifteen hundred dollar system. Woo! <laughs> it sits in the kitchen. It's an all-in-one. <laughs> it's nothing complicated. Forty, 40 liters of beer. One of the kids have to move <laughs> out now. Tell him that uh, he's got to start installing a 220 outlet now. Yes. <laughs> Actually, the G40 has a 110 or a 220. I like to line dry. We can put it outside. You can use either. So, yeah, totally. totally. That. That's great. How long have you been home brewing, Mindy? I have not been home brewing yet. Um, six years ago, I started professionally. Uh, gotcha. I started as a an intern turned into the seller operator and I am currently the assistant brewer slash head of QA QFC. Sorry. Nice. Where do you work? So uh I work for no coast so it will be a new thing to do it at home. I did do a couple five gallon batches in college so when nice. I was getting my degree. So yeah you're gonna love it. to get how, back to this how big system. is the beer system you guys how big how big is the brew house at your spot? Uh, we have a 20 barrel system, nice. so we okay. do a lot of big batches and then we have a one barrel nano system, but we were checking out grandfather last week drooling over in the brewery. So I get to rub oh. in my one one. Right? <laughs> like imagine going into work tomorrow and telling everyone at work what you just won. That's awesome. Badass. And you know, if oh, you... we have a group text. It's going there now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys can use the Fantastic. G40 to bat batch test. That's what I was saying, man. You can formulate some of your own recipes there, Mindy. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And then just take them the beer and say, yeah, I want to make this, this beer. This is the best. You know what I mean? Lots of folks yeah. use the grain fathers for that, um, for helping mm -hmm. to formulate recipes mm -hmm. uh, that, so that, that when they take it to their brew team, they can have you know, beer in hand and say, taste it. Like we can do mm -hmm. this. I've been in a few breweries where they have their the fun. little G30 next to all the 20 BBLs and they do everything <laughs> on that first and perfect it and then scale. Yeah. Right. Sous vide at lunch, have steaks, yeah. you know, in the brew yeah. house. Mm -hmm. We do have a Civive at work too, which we have used for lunch, but <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. Well, congratulations, Mindy. We're super happy for you. Um, we will be in touch after the summit to get all your details and Thank get you. that out to you. Um, really happy. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on here at the last second uh, so we can all see that big smile on your face. Um, and congratulations. Yeah. Go. Thank you so much for joining the summit. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Thank you. All right. We'll catch you I later. Am. Good. Bye. <laughs> Woohoo! How cool is that? Yay. I'm so happy for her, but also bummed for themselves at the same time. <laughs> Dude, I'm bummed. I'm like, oh, I wish I was an attendee <laughs> so I could get that. That would be amazing. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. Um, <laughs> Cool. Let's see. We got a few more minutes here. We've got a few questions. You guys let me know which ones you have not answered yet. Um, I think I heard you all. funniest homebrew whoops. You, you did them all? We did. Although, Catherine, you okay. didn't get to answer the whoopsie story. Oh, you the whoopsie story. Whoopsie. Well, I think the whoopsie story is probably related to like dropping the grain basket back into the, the boiler um, without mm. securing it properly. Mm -hmm. um, which is not a really fun whoopsie. Mm -hmm. No, uh, those no. whoops can be tricky that you so, turn around. You know, my, my rules are like, make sure that you're wearing, you know, proper footwear and uh, just like, be careful. <laughs> we use yeah. um, welding gloves a lot of the time when we're lifting okay. our grain basket, just because they're yeah. longer, right? And they're more right. dexterous than oven mitts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, I totally have had similar with like, I put my research, you know, like I'm saying I'm 
sanitizing my chiller and I just flop the hose in and then it like comes back out and like flings across my yes. face with burning wart drops, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and you're like, it burns. Um, right. And and then the worst one I ever had was, I like to brew with wheat a lot. I didn't realize how much I loved wheat beers until I started yeah, home brewing. I love wheat beers. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so one time I just had a really, and I always use rice holes, but I had a stuck mash. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought to myself, you know, because you lift it up and you let it drain, you realize you got a stuck mash. And I was like, well, I'll just put it back down in the liquid and stir it. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. No. <laughs> it displaces. It, it doesn't just all go back in. So I just like started mm -hmm. overflowing. I was just like, oh my God, what do I know? Oh my wart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. So yeah. I ended up having to like set my grain basket aside, drain mm -hmm. out most of my wort into a bucket, okay. put my grain basket back in, and then basically dump my wort back on yeah. top of it, add mm -hmm. some more rice holes, give it a really good stir, really good mm -hmm. stir, bring it back so up. Funny, like I think everything you guys have said, I've also done. Yeah. It's right. just like, you just have to do to get better. Yeah. And that's all, right? It's yeah, like, and, and very rarely have I made the same mistake twice, I'll tell you. Because <laughs> right. it's so devastating when you do. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to make things that are really hard to make. And um, like the, the beer that I took to Queen of Beer that was best of show in 2019 um, was a sweet potato, a purple sweet potato, mashed beer and cool. i made it several different ways it was very difficult to make um but also also generally resulted in stuck mashes or stuck sparges and um you know like my my process or my thing now is i'm working on decoction mashes and cereal mashes to bring in adjuncts and it's hard but i like it and it is um good if you're working with a grandfather at home to, to be able to do those things. Cool. Yeah. You know, we didn't even mention how easy it is to step match with the grandfather. I mean, that was really oh, yes. the biggest like, mm -hmm. woot, woot, like you can go and try all those crazy German mash, smash mm -hmm. profiles. And, you know, you listen mm -hmm. to Ashley Carter over beer Stott lager house, who is like, the goddess mm -hmm. of lager if you ask me she's a big proponent of step mashing and you can just dial it right in and boom, it's off and doing it. It's fantastic. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, you all, we are at the time that we need to say goodbye. Thank you all so much for joining us for this awesome session. Catherine, thank you very much for coming on and sharing with us all of your grandfather knowledge and experience. Maria, so lovely to meet you. Thanks Happy to have a Canadian us. on the panel. Absolutely. Yay. Have a I'm good throw an day a in there. Thanks, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, eh? <laughs> I've been noticing you can pick out the all the Canadians. You didn't say that. You didn't say that. This they say about. Know. It's yeah. It's all. It's the about. The about. Um, <laughs> calls them out immediately. But uh, yeah, go hockey. I'm a big hockey fan. So. Yeah. <laughs> go hockey. It's, it's, it's part of the law up there. You gotta like hockey. <laughs> But yes, thank you all for joining us. Um, if you weren't lucky enough to win the grandfather, but you still want to get your hands on one, you know, you did get in your interactive bonus box, a code that's good for 10% off any of their equipment online, which they just do not do very often. Um, so if you have been saving up your pennies or you've been a really good person and you just deserve yourself a treat, go over there and check it out. Cause you're not going to be disappointed. Treat yourself. Yeah, treat yourself. Yeah. All right, y'all. We'll see you. We're running into the last three hours of the set of the summit here. Um, so thank you again for joining us. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Sundays. Thank you. Bye, friends. Bye. Bye. <laughs>